Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. Today's video we're going to be doing a histogram. So here we're going to be using six classes to create a histogram for this data. This data is also continuous data. It's not regular data. Usually we have discrete values when making histograms. In this case, we have decimal values. And our data is actually the duration in minutes of eruptions of, her of uh, earthquakes, right? So here these numbers correspond to our last video that dealt with the eruption time in minutes. And these are the corresponding duration of those eruptions. So what we're going to do first to do this, again, is we're going to identify the class width so that we can create our limits for each class. Now, since we have six classes, we're going to be dividing our range with six for the class width, right? So our class width is going to take the range, which is the high minus the low, and we're going to divide that by the number of classes that we desire here. The number of classes desired in this case is six because the question tells us that's why it's number one line. So let's find the range here. So our highest value on this table appears to be 4.70. So let's circle that in. The high is 4.7. The low is 2.0. Then we have 1.83, the only one with a one. So we're going to subtract these two for our range. We have 4.70 minus 1.83. We're going to divide this by the number of classes, which are 6. And now, the subtraction of 4.70 minus 1.83 is 2.87. Make sure you use the calculator to do these calculations, and we're dividing that number by 6. Again, I'm going to abbreviate the class width with just CW. And the CW here, in this case, is 2.87 divided by 6, which gives us a decimal number, which is going to be 0 0.478. And the threes just begin repeating here in this case. Now be very careful when you're making your class width, because again, as I said, we have decimals here. So just imagine these were whole numbers. So we're going to move the decimal two places over to imagine where we're going to round up. Now if I see the decimal here, I round it up two places, and I see I have 47.8. So I'm going to use this 8 to round up that 7, which is going to give us the number 0.48. Now it's practical to do this again because we have to identify our class width by rounding up to the next digit of what we have here. So in this case, the difference of the two divided by six gives us this. Since we have this to the hundredth position, we're gonna round this number to the hundredth position as well. All right, now that we have our class width, we're gonna begin our class limits. And again, our class limits goes from the smallest number until we find the class that can fit the largest number, but in this case we're just going to make six classes from the base number, which is 1.83. So here we have our class limits. We're beginning the class limits with the number 1.83. Now when we add the class width to this number, right, we want to add that number going downwards, right? So we're adding 0 0.48 to every one of these numbers. Now the next number we're going to have when we add 0 0.48 is 2.31. Adding 0 0.48 to this, we get 2.79. If we continue going downwards, we'll see that we get 3.27. After we add 0 0.48 to this number, we're going to get 3.75. And for the last class, first lower limit, we're going to add another 0 0.48, and that's going to give us 4.23. Again, be careful when you're adding this, because remember, the class width has to have the value of 0 0.48 going horizontally. And vertically, you're just adding that class width going downwards. So we're going to just go back one position in the hundredth place of this number and place it up here. So even though the difference between these two numbers is actually 0 0.47, from 1.83 to 2.30 encompasses a class width of 0 0.48. And again, we're going to add these same numbers going downward. So the next number here is going to be 278 when we add 0 0.48. And we continually add the 0 0.48 going downwards to this column. Make sure you're using the calculator when doing it, right? This would give us 3.26. Adding 0 0.48 to this gives us 3.74. The following term, when we add 0 0.48 to this, is going to give us 4.22. And for the last class here, when we add 0 0.48, that's going to be an even number. It's going to give us exactly 4.70. 
And in this case, we see that the highest number falls on the highest class here, the sixth one, and the lowest number falls on the first class. So our class limits are perfect, all right? For the next column, what we're going to do next is we're going to create the class boundaries, because when we're making a histogram, we need to have boundaries and a frequency. So here for our boundaries, since we have numbers that are rounded uh, to the nearest hundredth, we're going to use the nearest thousandth, and we're going to subtract 0 0.005 thousandths, or five, negative 5 thousandths to the left limit. And we're going to subtract that, and we're going to add 5 thousandths to the right limit. And that's a zero there. And so now what we're doing then is just subtracting this from this, and this is going to become 1.825. On the right hand side, we just add the 5 to the last digit here, so it's going to be negative, it's going to be 2.305. The right side is always easier to make than the left, so I'm just going to go ahead and insert all those limits on the right side from the boundaries. And this number, I just add 2.785. Here I have 3.265. I take this number and just add the 5 at the end. Same goes for the 422 and also for the 470. Now, as far as the left goes, remember the previous entry goes on the next line. So this becomes 2.305. This one goes down here, 2.785. This one goes down here, 3.265. Again, the same goes for this one, 3.745. And subtracting the negative 0 0.05 from this number again, we get 4.225. Now, once we have our boundaries in place, we can go ahead and create the frequencies for each class, right? To do the frequencies, again, we're going to go counting off the numbers from the left to right. So here we have, and in the previous video, I instructed you guys how to count going downwards per column instead of counting across rows. It's more confusing when you see more numbers on your periphery. It's better when you see less going downward. So for the first class, we're going to have a frequency of three, right? So we have. 183 to 2.3, you would just go in here and you count them off. Like 1.83, that's 1. The second number that falls in this width is 2.00, and finally 2.12. If you do this correctly for every class, you'll get the numbers 1, 0, 3, 5, and 7. Now this is the completed frequency distribution with class boundaries of the duration and minutes of the eruptions. All right, so now let's make our histogram, right? To make our histogram, we're going to do the same thing as we did before. We're going to have the frequency on the left side going upwards. And we're going to have our duration in minutes. On the horizontal. So here we'll have our histogram placed. We're going to need a little, need a little bit more space because these class boundaries that we're dealing with are going to have three digits in them, right? So our frequencies will go from the smallest to the highest plus one. So here we start at zero. And we're going to go up to eight. Just to make sure it covers all the ground. We know halfway through eight is four. Halfway through four and eight is six. Halfway between them is seven and five. Halfway between four and zero is two. Here we have one and here we have three. Going left to right, we have to have all these boundaries in place, and what we do is we just take one whole column and the last number over, or we take the first number, and we take the next column next to it. So we'll start with 1.825, the next point being 2.305, the next point, 2.785, following point is going to be 3.8. 265. The following one is 3.745. The following is 4.225. And finally, the final point is 4.705. We don't need anything else after this here, so we can just wipe this down. And now we're just going to go and insert in the frequency bars for each one. The first frequency has a level of 3, so we're just going to insert the 3 here and box that in. It's the class width there, right? The width goes from this to this with the boundaries. The following one we have is 1. So we'll put the 1 here. This is our 3. I'll just write the numbers inside of them. You don't have to do this component. 
I'm just writing the numbers in so that you can see it a little clearer, all right? The following one is zero, so we're not gonna put anything for this interval that we have from 2.785 to 3.265. We'll just leave that one blank. The following one has a frequency of three, so we'll go up to three and box this in. The next one has a frequency of five. Go up two more. Might have gone a little too high. If you want to do this extra neat, you can also use a ruler. And the final one has a seven here. So we're just going to go up to seven. Box that in. So this has a three. This has a five. This one has a seven. All right. Thank you.